Hello pilots, welcome back to Motion RC Live, episode 3, and today we're going to be doing uh, a bit of a setup on the F5N Tiger II from Freewing uh, that you see in front of me. I was going to do a full unboxing live, but I wanted to, you know, I, I got in there yesterday just to check it out, and I've never built the F5 before, and I'm like, ah, I don't want to be fumbling with screws and messing around with something, so I filmed a lot of the portions that got me to this part, but then I thought... What's more beneficial maybe is showing you how I set up the Admiral Stabil Stability Plus Gyro. I'd like to spend more time on that and show you how I do it live. Obviously, I did all the videos that are on the product page for the RX 600 Stability Plus, and I did them one at a time, so each video is its own separate thing. One about the dip switches, one about, you know, control surfaces, but I want to show you just how long, I, I mean, it doesn't take me long now, I've set up a lot of these to do it, so I think it'll help you guys out. Um, if it does, and if you have any questions, obviously let me know, but, um, <clears throat> you know, just show you how I get it set up. The F5, oddly enough, is one of the, probably one of the last few remaining free wing jets that I never, uh, never got a chance to fly or unbox. So I'm really excited to finally uh, get my hands on it. Checking out the history of the Freewing F5, I saw that our Hobby Squawk page was created way back in 2014. So uh, this model definitely in the old classic Freewing box, not the uh, the newer black and white boxes that they, that they moved to. So this is definitely way before my time, but from going through the thread, I could see that it was a... Uh, you know, it's always a, a love. A lot of people love the F5. They say it's one of the faster 80s, and that was before they introduced the high-performance version. So this baby, uh, as we spoke two weeks ago in our first show, we were talking about the in-runner, out-runners, and this one now is the high-performance version. This has the 1857 kV uh, outrunner, um, in-runner motor inside of it now, but you can still get the outrunner version, which as people have said on Hobby Squawk, it was one of the faster models then. So now, I don't know if it'll get more speed with the in-runner, but it should be even more efficient than it used to be, which uh, is definitely going to be a help. So as you see, I got the model to a point where, again, I can now just set it up. I just have to put the linkages on the full flying stabs, but out of the box, she's a little different compared to building the T-33. Um, when you take her out of the box, you're going to get, you're going to notice it is a two-piece fuselage. So uh, that's something you're going to have to glue together. Again, something I definitely didn't want to do live, have to wait for things to glue. Also, the landing gear, as you'll see in a little bit, um, doesn't come pre-installed because much like the AL37, you need to have the landing gear dropped and down before you put on the wings. So it's one of those uh, styles of putting it together. But overall, not too hard, just a little more tedious than what you're used to on some of the newer freewing models, which again... The T-33 shows you just how far we've come, our free wings come, just in six years. So here are all the parts laid out on the table. You can see, you know, looks very good. I love that the decals are already pre-applied. They went with the VFC-1111, the sundowner scheme, which I think is one of the more popular schemes. I see a lot of guys do it to their F4s and things like that. So you get the missile rails, and they are not the MWS system. They are screwed on. And then here's the uh, the wing section. So you can see they already have the control rods um, already pre-installed, but it's the landing gear here that you're gonna have to glue in. And I'm just I just use the glue that comes in the box. And here they are, the two mains. Nice trailing link suspension on these. I don't know if that's upgraded since when it was first uh, available, but that's what you get now, which is awesome. Aluminum suspension. So there's the uh, front half of the fuselage. And you can see they already installed the carbon fiber rods and they give you two leads, one's for the landing gear and one's for um, the nose steering. And then there's just the front with the shark mouth. I love it. I think it's really cool looking. Now the uh, spring loaded nose gear. So it's just a spring that the nose gear catches to close the door. So always a nice feature. And that was done then back in 2014. But I know a lot of guys dig that nowadays. You get your full flying stabs and they just again install with the little um, slip, um, the little circle piece that goes over the, the stab. I'm, I'm forgetting what it's called while we're here live. Maybe someone can uh, can show me or can tell me what that piece is. Then you get your peripherals, some things you got to glue on to cover your servo wires. You've got a rester hook and there it is guys. Here it is, the F5 all laid out. So the first thing I did was install the landing gear. I wanted to get that in first. So the best thing you're going to do is, 
or at least I do, is you got to drop the gear. So I use the servo tester. It makes it not only easier to install, but it's the only way you're going to be able to slide the wing on when you get to that point. So just make sure you have the gear dropped. Then what I do is I take my razor blade, guys, and I just score it up. Now, mind you, we're going to release a full video of this build. So that's why I'm kind of speeding up the process here and things like that. But then I just drop in your glue. Once you score it up, that creates more surface area. And then you're just going to press in the gear. It's a perfect fit as long as you get it right. Actually, in, in this video, notice I put the gear wrong side on first. I ended up changing it later, but there it is. That's when they're both complete. And the troughs for your server wires are right there to lead them right through it. It's pretty self-explanatory for anybody who's ever set up a jet. And I'll go into further detail when we get to the live video. So then the next step was the, um, we'll get to assembling the fuselage. So again, it's just glue. And when you're doing like the AL-37 uh, is, or the Tiger Cat, there's a lot of, you know, two-part fuselages. I like to score up both sides of the foam. Whenever I'm meeting foam on foam with the foam tack, uh, I just want to create more surface area. I've been told that and that's just the way I always do it. So I just score up any surface that's going to touch each other. Then I'm going to take the glue that's in there and I'm going to, you know, I put, I, I apply it liberally on the carbon spars itself and then across on both sides. And then I'm going to let gravity do the work. So once you touch them together, Again, you want to pull them apart, see the stringy bit, let air into the mixture on this glue for about 60 to 90 seconds. And then I just stood it up and let it sit there for an hour just to make sure that gravity did the work to, uh, you know, to get the fuselage nice and tight. So the next step that I did was work on the tail section. Now you do get three different types of screws with this one. You get flush mount screws. They're going to be for the vertical stab. You get rounded screws for the missile rails and you get the fatter screws for the, uh, the fatter screws for the main wing assembly. So working on the full flying stab again, here it is a little circular bit like any, any full flying stab for the most part that we have. Uh, I know the F4 is this way. I think the F22 is similar trying to think off the top of my head, but you just want to make sure you put the screw in first is what I do. I get it threaded a little bit just so it can slip over. And then I just slip it on top and you want to tighten it down. And if you want to use some thread locker, you know, I may go back in there and do that later. I did this actually this morning about, about an hour and a half ago before we went live. I said, you know what? I want to build this up a little more before we get started. Then next you're going to have your tail your vertical stab, I mean. Make sure you check your polarity and then just work the wire down so that as you push down on the on the vert, you're gonna get a nice clean attachment. You could get the four flush mounted screws. Those are the ones you want. So there's three screw, two screw baggies. One's gonna have four flush mounted, as you see here on the left, and then four of the rounded. Again, the rounded ones on the right are gonna be for the missile rails. So we're gonna use the flush mount for the vertical stab. Nice, drive those in. And now we're gonna do the main wing section. And now unlike some of the newer models, you know, again, this is one that you're gonna to have to work. There's no ribbon cables with this. So this is one that they give you four, uh, four Y cables. One's a three-way Y lead for your gear, then two two-way Y leads for your ailerons, your flaps, and um, for your rudder and nose gear steering. Uh, which goes in later. But you basically just got to make all your connections, check your polarity, use a go get them wire to send them through the trough. And they do give you a, a little piece that you can cover all this later. So I haven't even glued that in yet because again, I put it together a little earlier today, um, this morning. And I didn't want to finish it off yet until I got it all set up with the gyro. I want to check my servos and everything before I even worry about that. But then you're going to take the last four screws, which are the fatter heads, eight millimeters and you can install the wing. So now you're back with me guys and that's where I left off. So while I have it here, um, I'm pretty impressed by it. Again, I don't think I've ever seen the F5 in person. And if I have, I can't really remember. It's just one of those ones that I know it gets a lot of love uh, whenever somebody posts a video about it. But I guess just one of those classic models that people don't get too excited about when they or post about but I'm going to be posting about this. I can't wait to get out and fly it. I think it looks cool. I love the, you know, again, I love the livery. I like off colors, so that's why I went with the camo T33. I like orange tips, like contrasted contrasting on camo, like 
you know, the Sundowner's tail with the, uh, with the nice missile rails. I, I dig it. I think it's got a lot of character to it, if I could say, um, about a model. And check out the gear. One thing I was impressed with, you know, I glued this in yesterday, but I love that trailing link man they really they really go down not that this model is going to be a heavy model at all but uh just in case you hit hard that gear is going to be really really nice so what i want to do is let me open the top i'm going to take out i had a battery in there for weight because she will sit and again i didn't get the elevators down i don't have my receiver plugged in yet so the the goal is i have what it is 12 10 now i am I've got 50 minutes to uh, to do this gyro, and it shouldn't even take that long. But if anybody's ever worked with the Admiral Stability Plus gyro, man, I love them. And I think a model like this reminds me kind of with the way the wing loading is, the shorter wing. Or if you sort of like the F5, where uh, um, the F35, the 70 millimeter, where something with a shorter wing or the Mirage, like a gyro is going to help a little bit. So something like this, I might... I, I mean, I'm sure I could fly it without. Usually I set these up where I could turn them on and off. But um, just for today, I'm probably going to set it up in combo A. But first things first, so let's get to our gyro receiver. Now I'm going to bring over this camera. This is a B cam that we have. And I'm going to twist, tilt it down a little bit. So whenever you're setting up the Admiral Stability Plus, you see me there, Al? Uh, moving, there we go, right there. Right there? So whenever you're setting it up, you're going to see you have your dip switches, you've got your pots, the potentiometers, so that you can, uh, you know, you can set the gains for your aileron, your elevator, and your rudder. And then what you want to do is you're going to turn it over, and Alex can show you a better, a better, uh, a better picture of this. But you can set up this gyro four ways. So there's the there's the better picture, and it's on the back in case you need reference. But you could do a normal aircraft which is gonna be like this F5, which is just elevator, rudder, ailerons, all working. Normally you have a Delta aircraft, so if you were gonna set up the Mirage, uh, where your elevators and your ailerons work at the same control surfaces, do the same thing, um, you're gonna do that. You have a V-tail, so I know a couple like hot liners, warm liners. I don't really know if there's any free wing models that have a V-tail, I don't think so. And then you have a flapper on option, option as well, which can be used in almost any jet. And that's actually one that I have yet to try. I've never flown with flapper on, so I would love to give a uh, to give that a try eventually. But I'm just going to set it up for normal. So if you come back, normal shows on the uh, on that screen where you want to go to the dip switches of J4, J5 on, and J6 is off. So that pertains to the dip switches here. You see J6, J5, J4. So we want four and five on and six off. So right now, they are all off when you get it out of the box. So we're gonna go J4 on, J5 on, leave J6 off. Now that is in a normal orientation. So now, Alex, if anyone has any questions, guys, we're gonna do a question and answer thing a little later, guys, where I'll get to the live. But as I'm plugging this all in, this is why I didn't wanna build it live because this gets boring. This is why we edit the videos to get rid of all the, the minutia. But I'm going to plug in my throttle. Now with the uh, Admiral Gyro, your polarity, all the positive is going to be towards the, the action of the gyro. Negative is going to be towards the edge in case you guys ever needed that. That's going to be my rudder. Well, I don't want to do rudder next. I like to do in order. So my aileron lead, I... I labeled them as I pulled them through because again you have those two those Y connectors that you're bringing through the fuselage so it made it easier to label them so aileron is next let's get your elevator so who here in the chat has an F5 I think I saw Ray Manuel is he in here Guniac yep. Guniac's in here did you have an F5 and did you fire booty it yet speaking of I got to try out your your uh your afterburner guys if you haven't seen ray manuals uh afterburner it looks really cool the only one i tried was the center burner from rc geek i do love his uh the way his like starts out it like flickers but i think rays is a lot brighter and it looks really just looks really good and i'm sure this baby would look good with a uh with a fire booty as he calls it so we got landing gear and then where is my flap Okay. 
And all right, polarity is set. Now I have everything plugged in the right way. And it looks like with this model, and actually if someone could tell me, cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna mount this not where it's gonna live. I'm gonna mount it somewhere where it's gonna be easy to see on camera uh, as we go. Um, but it looks like I'm gonna have to be mounting it in the back towards the, the back of the model. But first thing first, I gotta bind it up. So you're gonna take one bind plug and you're gonna pop it in the open port, which not only serves as a bind, but the beauty about this, even though we call it a six channel RX 600, it is a seventh channel. After you bind, you can add you know, an extra channel there. It'll be the aux two on your transmitter if you want to. So there we go. We got gyro there. I already set up the model. In essence, I created one. So I'm trying to do all the stuff that's going to save me time. And let me get rid of this before I break it because nose pedo tubes always get broken around these parts. So let's plug it in. Now, obviously, the Admiral Stability Plus Gyro only works with Spectrum. So anybody who's done Spectrum, um, you know, hold the bind button. And then I'm going to hold on to the plane just in case she goes off. And bind complete. There we go. So flaps ended up dropping at my position. I got ailerons. I see my elevators. And right and left. So I don't know. I want to pull that out. My bind plug. And now you can see, it starts out, this gyro starts out in combo A. So combo A is gyro on. And on a switch or on the trainer button, the way they show, it would be recovery mode. Now, or stability mode, stability plus mode. Basically what it does is when you let go of the sticks, regardless of your orientation, if you're flying in the mode or if you, if, let me start that over. We're live. <laughs> training, we ask you to put it on the training port. That's the way it's set up. I always set it up on, on a switch. So I can fly in that stability mode if I want to. I could leave it in that stability mode. What will happen is, as I'm flying around, when I let go of the stick, it'll immediately right the aircraft. And it'll always fly the aircraft straight and true. But the second I make any inputs on any surface, you're going to override that. It's not going to fight you in a way. It's only when you let go of the sticks, it'll fly nice and straight. And obviously, you have to have the plane trim nicely and everything. But on the way we show it in the video that we did, uh, we put it on the bind button, which is what they recommend. So if you're flying with your gyro on, you lose orientation, you push that trainer button or the bind button, and the plane's going to right itself. And just so then you know, at least in your head, all right, I'm orientated level, and then it's still going to be up to you to, to make sure you bring it home and get where you're going. But so that's what basically combo A and combo, um, you know, combo A does. Combo B would be gyro off to give you the option to have the recovery mode or the stability mode. So you could still push it on a trainer if you want. Then combo C is just gyro on, gyro off. So that's the way I usually set them up. Um, but I think for this one, I've never flown in the recovery mode when it's on a switch before. I always, for the video, the one time I ever used it was for the video we made just to show it working. But I'm thinking for this one, I want to see what happens just flying in that mode because I'm thinking for a nice straight passes, especially when we're trying to get camera shots and stuff, it's probably going to be awesome to just like know that once I set the plane up straight, let go and just, you know, let the plane do its thing. That's the one thing I'm learning as a becoming hopefully a better and better pilot is less is more on the sticks. You know, like if you're a lot of times at the beginning, you're always overcorrecting and your plane coming in, just get into position and let the plane do the work. So I just want to show you guys real quick on this camera, Alex, the mix. So this is the mix that I used. So if you check the manual or if you check my videos that are already out there, um, the mix would show I mixed into the gear with the 5%. If you want it on a switch, just pick the switch. So I put it on H, which is my top right back, top right switch back here. And that is where it goes and I can see if it works. Yep, there we go. So the switch is working and you'd see it on the monitor on this side too. Uh, it goes from 100 to 95 when you, when you flip it. So now back to the main camera, Alex. So again, you see that right now, the gyro is orientated upright, which you cannot install in. But when I flip the switch, that's recovery mode. It thinks the plane, it's trying to right, trying to level the plane. And as I level, 
it's going to keep you level. And now this is the proper orientation for your Admiral Gyro receiver. So Alex, I'll tilt this camera up if you want to do B cam. There we go. And I'll move that out of the way. You know, let me bring that down. There you go. So that's the proper orientation. You're always going to have to have the leads to the back of the aircraft aft. There is there's some debate. We say in the manual you can't mount it upside down, but I'm not going to lie. That's how I have it in my lipish, and all I did was just reverse the way it corrects. I think you can mount it upside down and you're going to be okay, but I'm not going to tell you to do that. <laughs> you didn't hear that from me. Um, but you know, at least try to get it flat and level every time. That's going to be your best bet. But the only other way you might be able to orientate it would be like that. But again, so one thing I like about this mode for setting up being in combo A is it really helps when you got to check if you're cor cor your correction direction. Because that's the next thing with the with the gyro. You want to make sure everything corrects in the proper way. But what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to actually I'm going to stay in this mode. I want to get it mounted flat and I'm just going to put it anywhere quick just so it doesn't do this goofy stuff on me. There you go. And this is one of those things that always takes forever to get out. Can I do it live on camera, guys? We'll do it live. And it is pouring rain here, man. It's been rainy for like two weeks straight. We managed to get out, and I'll show you a little later. I got out with the Mustang, and we took the T-33 out. I got one flight on the T-33, and then the wind picked up, and we just said, it's not worth it to be out here anymore. So we couldn't, we couldn't make that in-runner video. So my hope is the next time we get out to fly, I'm going to get video of this guy, because I want to see it on this in-runner. And the T-33, which I still want to do on both inrunners. Because, again, the T-33 has the 1920 KV 9-blade uh, inrunner versus this having the 1857 12-blade inrunner inside. So, you know, we'll be able to see. Maybe I'll swap that inrunner into this model as well. So, oh, of course, I put it down. I put a servo lead underneath it. I'm just going to mount it in this corner here. Come on, out of my way. Get out of my way. We'll push it up against the corner. All right. So now I'm going to put the battery in there. And now I'm going to ride this up front. So hopefully you get a better B cam, get a better view. But I don't think you really need to see in there, but that's where I got it kind of mounted at this point. But now my next step is going to be is everything correcting? So first things first, I haven't checked since I just bound it up if I even have my corrections right. So if I'm making a left turn. So that's reversed. Yep, that's a right turn. And then let me, oh, that's what I want to do. Let me get my elevator. Let me get my elevator linkages on so that I can fully do this. So bear with me, guys. And actually, while I do that, Alex, you can show... Mini Mustang, he has a minute of that little bad boy going around. That was so much fun. I was excited to get out there with that. It looked so good in the sky, but like a lot of people said, it was uh, it was cloudy that day. And uh, you definitely could lose the all white if you're not careful. So that's my Stability Plus thinking it's crazy. Let me get these on. I'm gonna put it on too. Is it going? Is she going? There's no sound on it, is there? No, no sound. No sound, but she sounded good, like you would. Anybody who's, if you don't have one of these things, man, she looks awesome. And I was like, I was excited. I want to give Callie props because she makes the best graphics. I think she's the only one making graphics for for RC aircraft, or at least the only popular one and we love her for it she does great work and i was so pumped to be able to fly that and then you could jump if i still have time you could yeah, jump to the it's back to you and then you could jump to the t33 if you want sure. we have no sound on that but i'm trying to get better and better but i man i took the i made it off and i, I think i only put in one or two clicks of up trim th three clicks of up trim is all i needed when i took my t33 off to have a great maiden i was so pumped about it 
and I'm just so mad that the wind, as I was going, we started getting like 15 mile per hour gusts and I caught a, a dead moment and I landed it and said, all right, that's the end of that. But what a beauty the T33 is to fly. I was so excited to finally get it and I really love the camo look. So as soon as I can, the plan is still to meet up with Patrick as well, Crowsdale, and do a tandem because he now has the USAF one and I've got the, the camo German. We wanted to get some nice shots of both of them flying together and I think it'll make a, for a better video if I pop the system that's in this model uh, in mine and he has the stock nine blade. I think that'll uh, make for a better a better go so let's say so i know my ailerons are reversed rudder is good and elevator is good so let me just reverse my ailerons let's go into servo setup and reverse left right left right and i'm not even worried about the flaps because the flaps have nothing to do with setting up a gyro okay so now i've got my you got to have your regular corrections, you know, going before you worry about correcting within the gyro. So now here's back to why I was saying being in that recovery mode or that stable mode is going to help a lot with knowing if you're, if you're correcting in the right direction, because right now, let me take the top off. If I make a, so I'm going to go. So now we're in that stability mode. So if I make a right turn or a, yep, a right turn, you see that my aileron is coming up. So I'm checking the ailerons first. You can see that it's moving up. So it wants to correct me to level. So that means it is going in the right direction. I don't need to go to the dip switch inside to now change that. I can, I can leave that alone. It's gonna correct the right way. Now, if I go into regular gyro, this is where it gets harder to do. A lot of guys try to do it like this, where you wanna see, basically you want the surface in the direction you're moving it to be coming at you or up up towards you um, so it's kind of hard to see what i would do sometimes or as i used to do but i learned to use that other mode um, i would set the gains on the pot super high just so i got an exaggerated look at the uh at the aileron coming back towards me but when you're in this mode i don't need to do that i can see oh it wants to go that way so now let's check the elevator the elevator is going opposite. I want the elevator right now. It's telling me to go the wrong direction because I want that to go. If I'm facing down, I want to go up. This is sending me more down. So I'm going to have to reverse the elevator. So you can look at the top from the top down. Can you get in there? I'm getting close to it now. I see the flashing light. You see the flashing light. You know what? I could do that. There you go. So you have your dip switches. You have rudder, elevator, and aileron. So I'm just going to move. And I use a little, a little, uh, a little flathead screwdriver. And now I just reversed the elevator. So let's check. So you just do it step by step, and it's pretty simple to do. So now, if I start heading down, it wants to fly me up. If I start heading down, it wants to fly me up. So that's good. If I move it, so when I move the surface, again, when I move the surface towards me, it should flip up. Now I'll flip the gyro back to just gyro on, and you can see that it's correcting in that direction. But at least when I'm here, you can really see it pronounced. And that's why I like the recovery mode. Even if I don't fly in it at all, even if you never fly in it, it's great to help you set up the aircraft. And then lastly, we want to check the rudder. So when I move the rudder towards me, that surface should move towards me. So let's check it. Now, am I on, I'm on regular gyro, right? No, I'm in stability mode. So let's see. Now this one's tougher because the plane will always fly straight. It's not the type of thing where it knows you're going, you know, this is straight, this is straight, this is straight. So this is one where you do have to, it probably better to be in regular gyro mode. So now it's moving away from me. So what I'm going to do real quick, just to show you something, I'm going to turn the potentiometer or the pot for the rudder. I'm going to blast it all the way up. So that's the middle pot. And I believe this direction turns the gain all the way up. 
So now I should have a super pronounced action on the rudder. There we go. So now a lot more, a lot more rudder correction, something I'd never fly in. So when I turn towards me, the rudder's moving away. So that means it's correcting the wrong way. So we go back into the pot on the potentiometer and we will reverse the rudder. So now rudders on the top, elevator aileron. It's the third one from the, uh, from the bottom, if you will. And now let me check it again. Boom. Now the rudder's coming at me when I make the movement. And if I make the movement towards the camera, you can see the rudder moves towards the camera, towards you. That means it's correcting properly. Now everything is correcting properly. So now at this point, obviously, I don't know if my gyro is going to live there and it doesn't matter. Now I can move my gyro around if I want to. But since we're here and we're talking about the Admiral Gyro and that was 20 minutes in, let's, let's quickly go over your gains. So now I'm going to put this, I'm going to point this back down, Alex, and you can see the pots. So right now, can you see the pots on there? Yeah, is it in focus? focus? Yeah, if I move it, it moves. Move it around a little bit. Any better? Try to go closer. Try to go closer? <laughs> there you go. All right. Yeah. So if I put this in there, it might auto focus out. But you seeing it? Eh. All right. Well, I'm going to show it. So anyway, the rudder, the rudder one is the only one I changed. Everything's going to be 90 degrees, so 50% gain, if you will, on your... Uh, on the pots when you get it out of the box. So the rudder, I twist it up. Basically, I'm just gonna do this quick. I'm gonna get this back to center. Where I start every aircraft, first move every pot all the way down. And then I like to start at about, about 15 to 20%. This is about where I will clock the gyro at the start. Cause I'd rather the gyro not uh, overcorrecting at the start. I hate seeing a shaky, a shaky aircraft, but there's one other thing I got to show you guys. So, so right now I have base, basically all of them straight across, if you can see that. So now they're not clocked, uh, 180, if you will, or north to south on the gyro, they're sideways east to west on the gyro is where I would start. But another thing I wanted to let you guys know about the Admiral Stability Plus Gyro, and this one's important, you have a remote master gain. When you set it up, your R knob, your right knob, if you have that on the spectrum you set it up, is a master gain. So I, I've, I've run into questions where people said I plugged it in and I'm not getting any response. And I think the answer is this needs, if, if you happen to have this knob all the way down, you're going to have a very low, almost no response. Like right now, my gyro is on, but I have no response. Now, where I set the pots manual is going to determine my max gain. So if I turn the spot all the way up, so if I turn the knob to its max level, it'll be the max level on the pot. So now you see the gyros working and that's very that's about all i usually have when i do my gyros and it depends it's the type of thing where i land and i and i change it but what i like to do with the gyro is you have to make sure it's right in the right position on your on your uh, on your gyro that's where i would go but the gain is great so if you're flying and you and you go too fast and you see your plane wobble you can lower the gain so what i would do is always keep get your plane set up with your knob fully turned up and then you can always you could always back down off of it which is great and basically you could shut it off so in essence when you're in combo a which is gyro on all the time or recovery so either option your gyros on you can turn the gyro off if you had to by just racking the gain all the way down maybe at night might not be fully off but it'll get to the point where it shouldn't affect you flying at all but it's a great thing to have because if you are too wobbly, you can lower the gain when you're on that flight, land, turn your pots down a little bit, then max this out again and try again. You want to get to the point where when this is maxed, your plane is flying good. Because I, I don't know about you, but 
I don't pay attention to my knob. If you put it away in your case or if you accidentally hit it, you may plug in on a different plane that's set up on a gyro and this could affect. So just always be, be conscious that when you set up the Admiral Gyro on a Spectrum, that this is very important, is your gain up top. So again, I have it now all set up. She is ready to fly now. I don't know where my CG is. That's why I don't know where I'm gonna end up mounting uh, the Admiral Gyro, but while I'm here, guys, are there any questions that you guys might, might have? Here we go. Is the R knob, all right, here's, is the R knob auto set to adjust gain? Yes, the R knob will be auto set to adjust the gain. I didn't plug anything in differently than I did. I did nothing. It's automatically in there. So I guess if you went manually into the right knob and just inhibited the knob, you would turn that off, but a remote master gain is great to have on a gyro, and it's something um, I don't think you'd want to turn off, but you got to be conscious of. And it's actually one of the things, when I made all the videos, I learned about it after. I have to make one final video for that, just to let people know, because most people probably don't even play with the knob. It's probably in the same position it's been forever. But if you make a mistake and you move that knob somewhere, you may take off, or you may plug into a different plane, and you have the knob, and you're like, what happened to this gyro? And you might think it's the gyro's fault. Go to check your master gains. So some people might say, I'm gonna rack the pots up to 100 and then just play on the knob and I don't know about that because you'll end up playing with the gain every flight. I like to have my gyro set up that I don't wanna think about it ever again. So all I know is every time I fly, my knob, if I'm flying on one of these, my knob is always maxed out and it'll be perfect. The pots are gonna be perfect for that aircraft. You know, I use the gain as an insurance policy. So like if, if I find out with the F5 that I have too much gain because when I'm at my knob is full and I'm flying and I'm getting wobble, I will lower the gain here, land, lower my pots, maybe a half tick, 10% tick on each pot or whatever pot I think might be affecting, depending on how I see it fly. Then I'll rack my, my gain all the way back up again and go for the next flight. Until I don't see it, then I don't want to touch it anymore. And then I know that every single plane that I have a gyro on is gonna fly well. So what else do I got? So Guniac starts with the knob all the way down. So, you know, that's a view, but then in essence, you're, you know, you're flying without a gyro in a way, right? I mean, regardless of what happens on the pots, um, you know, that's gonna be, you're basically, regardless of where you have the potentiometers on the gyro itself, when you turn the knob all the way down, you're gonna get very minimal uh, help, so. Yeah, there you go. Already down. Jameson says it happened to him when I upgraded from a DX8, DX6 to a DX8. Suddenly my one plane when Admiral was going crazy, had no idea about the knob being auto set until James told me it all in the fall. <laughs> ah, sorry, man. And that's something I'm going to update that video. I'm going to make a ninth video or a tenth video for that series because I, I don't think I mentioned I might not even have known when I did it then. Um, we learned about it through customer service. Um, Wayne, if you guys ever talked to Wayne or Martin, you know, a lot of our customer service guys, uh, they clued me into it first because I had gotten to that issue once. So, um, you know, it's a big help. And, and guys, that's what's great about the Admiral Jack is what is it, 30 bucks? You know, it works super well. Now, actually, while I'm here, my setup is not complete on the gyro because I didn't put it anywhere. Do not forget, guys, your aerials, you have to mount them 90 degrees. Like this, like this, like this, or like this. Never, if I were to leave this in there, and this is what some people do, I've seen people open up their plane and they just have their, am I on it? Oh, where am I going? Uh, a to the right. Oh, I'm gonna go this way. There we go. You see that now? My aerials are just together. I've opened people's planes at shows and seen their receiver just tossed in, not even mounted. And obviously, if you don't have a gyro, you don't necessarily have to mount the receiver itself. But if you're throwing your plane in there and these aerials are close to each other, or they're underneath the battery, or some people tuck them behind the side of the battery, you are just doomed to have a fail. Like you, you are destined to lose uh, to lose your model. It's not the receiver's fault. These things have to be free and clear of any interference. So where I'm going to mount these is one is going to be up on the wall over here. One is going to be down and away towards the back. The one thing about foam 
Foam does not affect signal at all. Carbon will if you see an exposed carbon uh, rod. We know that there's carbon behind here, so I'm going to go up over it and then down below. Uh, because that is like a block, man. When, you, when your plane, when your aircraft gets into a certain orientation and it can't see through the battery or something on an aerial, that's when you get a signal loss. And it's 100%, almost 100% of the time is going to be due to uh, how you mounted that aircraft and if you paid attention to your aerials. Now, the one thing about the Stability Plus, the only thing I wish they would add eventually is I wish they would allow you to install the satellite on this one. Because all the other three Admiral uh, receivers we sell, the basic uh, six channel, which is here, um, the seven, the seven channel with telemetry and the 10 channel all have the input where you could put the satellite. I've grown to love having that extra satellite for an extra 13 bucks. I get more orientation. And when I install the satellite, I will have the two aerials from the receiver going. So if one's going back, one's going up, the satellite's going to go down and forward or whatever. I want all four areas. So depending on how the plane is in the sky, I should have no issues because you're never nobody's flying a jet anywhere to a length away from themselves where they should ever lose signal on probably any system available today, any modern system, whether it's Futaba, FR Sky, Spectrum, you name it. Um, it usually comes down to how you have it orientated. Is it too close to your other electronics? You want that baby to be free and clear. So guys... So RC Jess, Jet Dude says his had a tendency to snap. Are we talking, you're talking about the F5 or I assume. Boom, boom, boom. So guys, are there any questions about uh, the F5 in general, guys? Anything about the Stability Plus Gyro? Because I can't believe we're 42 minutes in and I'm excited that I got it done. Now, obviously I have to do some finishing touches on it, but it's all peripheral stuff like, you know, mounting the mounting the missiles so i'm not going to bother doing that yet i want to check i want to check everything over but the goal is to get this out next week and uh get a video for you guys of how it flies now you know i'm excited to fly it mm -mm -mm. when will t33 parts be available on the website uh as, i guess as soon as where, warehouse is still probably unloading a lot of that container and they got to take the pictures and get them all posted but um paul I, I'll, I'll post as soon as they are available um, on social media and such, but it should be very soon. You know, I believe the parts are at the warehouse. It's just a matter of getting them listed, you know, and those those kind of things take time. But we will get it. Wild Bill, this is not a new release. This plane came out in 2014. So that means the product team was probably flying it back in 2012, which feels like forever ago. But it still looks, has a lot of modern qualities. If they, you know, really what it's missing from a newer jet, I would like to see better detail on the, uh, on the nozzles would be nice. So I'm sure I could 3D print those, which is great. Because back in 2012, I wasn't doing much 3D printing. I would like to see ribbon cables and getting away from the rat's nest that's, you know, that happens underneath. Because you have to manually do all the whys to get them through. But again, I... I you know, I see people complain about these things, but it took me all of, what, 15 minutes this morning to do it. It's not like it's hard. It's just a little extra tedious. So, you know, that's that's about it. But as far as the finish goes, man, it looks just as good as any other any other free wing model I've seen out. Canopy has two little nubs on the front, plastic, and then your latch, which is nice. They got the pilot in there. They got scale detail in the cockpit. And again, now, I don't know if they've had an upgrade on the F5 since... Um, you know, since it was, since it was released originally, because I never got a chance to get around to flying it. So, or seeing it. So I may be deal. This may be, you know, this may have like V2 qualities to it, but Alpha's not here to correct me on that. So I'm just going to have to roll with what I'm, what I'm thinking about right now. Do they offer three Guniac? Will they offer 3d printed parts? <sighs> Guniac, the 3D printed parts thing, it was awesome. I don't know if it caught on as well, at least coming from us, as it did from other people just doing them. Um, you know, to we had a lot of those parts printed and delivered to the uh, to the warehouse for I think for the Spitfire we did for the F4, but I just don't think they 
you know it's funny like people who want the 3d printed cockpit detail and stuff are very small niche of people and they happen to be the most loudest people on social because they're the ones customizing and putting out the best content um out there but the majority of people who fly i think probably have buy one or two planes a year they don't care as long as it looks nice out of the box and it's and it's a fun flyer they're not going to do those extra those extra steps so i don't think they'll ever come back to a model this classic for 3d parts but you never know i mean I'm sure the details are there, but we have a lot of guys like Dirty D. So many people are already doing it, and I hope they move their pro their stuff off of Thingiverse because as great as Thingiverse is, you shouldn't be giving away anything for free. You know, I bought a few parts from Dirty D on a forget there was a different when I did the F-18. Remember, I made all the ordnance. Um, I bought what did I buy? This thing. I bought this from Dirty D. It was a laser targeting pod that went under my F-18. This was a a failed print and. A color I didn't like but I bought that for like five bucks from him for the file because it wasn't on Thingiverse but you know it's should always post it make people buy it because it's awesome you know that's the best thing well guys we got 15 minutes so what I wanted to do because obviously guys the point of this live show is to also be dedicated to the fans I mean we have the customer community on Facebook we have you know I used to do the fan flights on YouTube which I kind of stopped because I'd rather promote you guys by sharing stuff. I think downloading someone's video, uploading it on our channel, and pushing people. That was my idea of it, but a few people I did for got mad at me. And again, I don't care what our views and likes are on Facebook. We're not monetized. That's why you won't see an ad pop up in the middle of our YouTube. I never want to monetize our YouTube. Our YouTube channel is an encyclopedia of information for MotionRC.com. That's all it's dedicated to. But, you know, obviously Hobby Squawk is cranking. So let's go through a couple of... The best things from this week that I saw uh, out there. So I think we're going to start. I see the Star Wars AL37 from Chris Holmes, I believe it was, Alex. Yep. And finally, we saw this. I was going to have Patrick Crowesdale do this to one because he is a huge Star Wars guy. And I'm so glad finally someone took up this livery. I couldn't imagine how hard it was to get all those little dots and make it look like stars. But man, that might be, even though I'm not, I'm not personally a Star Wars guy, that Star Wars might have been a little past my time. I was born when Jedi came out, so uh, I never really got into Star Wars too much, but I've seen all the movies. I definitely dig it, and what a good looking aircraft. I just don't want to see it in the sun. Um, so moving on. Oh, this was something that I think we're going to do Jason Miller. Is this Jason Miller? All right. Guys, last week, we unboxed the Black Horse Spitfire. You guys saw it. Get on Hobby Squaw, because I dropped that model off to Jason Miller. He's a guy at my local club. He was used to be the president there. He helped us out with the Jolly Good Flying, and he is in the process of building that bad boy. We dropped off. I got the NGH, uh, the GH38, so the 38cc motor I gave him. He's weighing all the parts. He's taking pictures of the whole process step by step. He is a builder at heart, man. He's actually funny. When I dropped off the Spitfire, he had a scratch-built Spitfire that he's working on, which now he's going to put to the side till he gets this bad boy up. But he's given great information, like putting petroleum jelly on the, uh, on the hinges before you put the epoxy on, just so you don't epoxy the hinges and things like that. He's a builder at heart. And again, jump on Hobby Squawk and check out the Black Horse Spitfire thread. And what we plan to do on this show is... In maybe a week or two, we're going to get over, me and Alex, to Jason's house. And I want to film him breaking in that motor because I've never seen an NGH motor broken in before. And we want to just update progress reports until we get to that eventual maiden day, which you're probably going to see here first before you see it anywhere. That's sort of the point. The next thing I saw on the uh, Facebook community, our customer community, was from Manu. He did an awesome weathering job on his P-38 Lightning. I think he was saying he used chalk for this, but I have to, uh, sure, and I'm sorry, Manu, if you're watching this, I would butcher your last name if I even tried, so I'm not even going to try, but check out the detail on this P-38. It is so, 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 so good looking, and uh, I'm so excited uh, to see it. I love when people do the detailing, and that's something I've got to work on. I think... 
From what I've seen, the guys who use chalk, I like that better than the airbrush version. Something about it, but even look at his F-22 in the back. Like, he even did it to that, and there's something really, really cool about that. It almost looks fantasy in a way, but I, that caught my eye when I saw it. So great work on that. Now, we do have another AL-37 that came through, and this is Timmy Tutant. Um, Timmy, I met at Jet Jam, what was that, two years ago now, Tim? I might have seen you at George's uh, Tire and Iron Aviation, but he's working on an AL-37 that he dedicated. This is more of a sadder story for the heart. He dedicated to his grandson who passed away at the very, very, very terribly young age of two. Um, I think if you've been on our Facebook community, you might have seen Tim posts about it at the time, and it's one of those that I'm a father of three kids, and I... I lost a sister a long time ago, and it's never fun to have those moments. So, Timmy, though, I wanted to say it looks absolutely gorgeous, and I'm touched. Uh, we're all touched that you would even think to, you know, use a motion product to do that. But obviously, your love of aircraft, I'm sure, um, you know, just one of those incredible... It looks, it looks beautiful. Can't wait to see it finish, and I hope to be able to film it when we come to Jet Jam this year. Um, for your son. I think Nathan is on the plane, Alex. Can you switch that picture? I forget his grandson's name. Switch. Can you go? It's on the back. It would be on the tail. Noah. 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 Was I knew it was an N. Sorry, but, uh, you know, we're thinking about Noah, Timmy. And thank you again. Now, did we have another one? I think we had Fast Phil or Rudy. Oh, yeah, this one was awesome. So this is Rudy Villa Villarreal. Did I get that right? It's on, you have it on the left side there. Rudy Villarreal. Villarreal, I, I think he's uh, Latin, I believe. But um, he posted this uh, of his Qantas custom AL-37, man. And Qantas got back to him. Like, I guess he shared it with them and they said it was awesome. So, man, finally, somebody, somebody noticed from a real airline must think that's pretty cool. So we expect, I mean, what airline wouldn't want to buy one of these things, put it in their scheme and... Uh, you know, and hang it up somewhere in their offices. So if you are a customizer, that might be a business to get into. Tell them for $2,000, I'll charge you for an AL-37 with custom schemes and you guys will make a pretty penny on that. Just pitch it to all the airliners. Uh, and then we have T-33. This was Fast Phil on Hobby Squawk. He took second place at his Desert Warbirds event. I believe he's in He's probably in Arizona somewhere, just based on the picture. He didn't say where it was. But I took second place with his brand new out-of-the-box T-33. No customizations for him. Um, he said he lost to some customized Carbon Z, I believe. But uh, good for you, t uh, Fast Phil. That's awesome to see. And uh, we, hope to, we always love to see an award, even if it's a small fun fly. It's always nice to get an award. And then Justin La. So Justin Lamb. Uh, <laughs> pilot extraordinaire he came out with us him and jeremy salt flying out in utah man you want to check out his recent flight of the t-33 he put two packs through her and got great flight times on it i didn't bother putting the sound i just cut up about a 30 seconds of it sorry justin stealing your fire but we'll have links to uh his channel i think it's like 410 studios or 410 productions i'll put a link in this video if you watch the replay so you can get to his youtube channel he posts a lot of content along with uh with jeremy salt and such so now what is what the am i looking shoots. at what is it the shoots oh and then helmsman rc shoots so this was the last thing i wanted to share guys i saw helmsman rc shoots this showed up uh steve hodges had used this shoot for his f4 if you ever saw it um way back man this was probably 2017 when he got these shoots it looks like helmsman popped up on facebook and he's selling these rc shoots now for any aircraft you want to do it for he doesn't tell you how you're gonna rig it up you might have to ask jump on hobby squawk talk to steve hodges because he had to customize it for his f4 but you can see him you know folding it up here and putting it in his plane this was from this was from a long time ago when he did this, but I got to see it work a bunch of times, and it's awesome, but he has all different colors now, um, all different, I guess, well, they're probably all the same size, but they look like, they look fantastic, and if you want to find him, I made a post on Motion RC's Facebook, so just scroll through our most recent posts, and you'll find him, and I hope if you're watching, if he's watching this, jump on Hobby Squawk, man, share your stuff, share a spot that people can go to, uh, you know, to see you. So there we go, guys. 410. Yeah, Wild Bill, he does. Let me look down. 
RC Flyby needs a free wing business leader. Well, as we said, it's funny. Go into the F5 release thread and you'll see so many of the same comments we see now when a new plane comes out. Oh, I wish they did this. I wish they did this. And now looking back on it from 2020, it, all of them, most of the ones that people wish this was then is has been. So think about where we're going to be eight years, six years from now. Um, you're probably going to get a lot more, but at least I know the AL-37 probably exceeded Free Wing's expectations. I know it exceeded my expectations, and I don't make them, thank goodness, because they wouldn't fly well. But uh, I think it was a great basis, and I definitely would expect to see other civilian jets, possibly in the future, you know, like, but it takes time. Again, guys, we did a How It's Made uh, article. Alpha wrote that. It was in Model Aviation Magazine. It's on our knowledge blog. Um, and it shows you 18 to 24 months from napkin concept to at your doorstep uh, is about an aircraft. So if there is one coming and it's just being started now, then two years from today is probably when you're going to be seeing it if you're going to be buying it. So we are not sure, you know, and, I, and I'll never tell you because what's the fun in that? I like teasing. You know, that's part of the fun of being in marketing of the tease days when I get to finally let you know something new's coming. But with us, something new is always coming. So uh, it is 1256. I got four minutes, guys. And any other questions? Um, what I did want to say, guys, since I don't see any questions popping up at the moment, jump in Hobby Squawk. We have a dedicated section for uh, this show now. I'm going to, now that this show wrapped, I'm going to start the next thread probably within an hour of this uh, live going off. And I'm still not sure where I'm going to go with episode four. Uh, I have a lot of things I could do, but more ideas of content. Um, if you like the section we just did, I think every week from at least now on, I want to do that. Uh, show some of the best happening. So if you want to make sure it definitely gets on the show, po post in Hobby Squawk. I can't say it more. You know, I sorted through, you know, our Facebook community and Hobby Squawk, but I don't get to always see everything. If you want to make sure I definitely see it because I'm checking this Hobby Squawk section, uh, which is dedicated to the live show, just post about it in there, you know, drop the link to your YouTube video or, you know, I, I want to call out events like tomorrow, Triple Tree Aerodrome's having a Frosty Dog event that I, I went to last year. It's just a smaller little fly-in, but if you're in South Carolina and you want to head over to that, check that out. But if you guys have an event at your field, I'll say it here, I, you know, no problem, man. Like, if you want extra promotion, this show, again, organically dedicated to you guys. So no tease for today, Jameson. No, not yet, but soon. <laughs> hashtag soon. Very hashtag soon. Mm -mm -mm. So RC noob. So I can only decrease gains on the knob and not increase past the max set on the gyro, but will move proportionally down from max limits already set on the gyro. It'll move proportionately down from the max pot that you have it on, if that makes sense. So right now, I have my knobs cocked up, let's say 20%. So I have full knob is 20%, 0%. So 5, 10, 15, 20. It'll never go past what the manual you put on the pot is. So you can't like override the manual pots. It'll only, the max on the knob will only be the max on the pots. So again, that's why I set my pots low to start. I just don't want a crazy, because you could get your plane into an uncontrollable situation if you have them set up too high where you might not even have enough time to turn your knob down if the plane gets violent. You know, like that's, I've seen it. You don't want to do that. Start low, work your way up. Get to the point with the gyro where you just see the, a little bit of this and then just bring it back a notch so then that's going to be the perfect spot for that gyro but then also having it on the knob windy days could change that too you know like so you know i use a gyro mostly just because if i fly on a windier day i just want the plane to fly straight i'm not thinking in my head that it's flying the plane for me or anything like that hello from russia actor creative apologize that we're about to leave in a minute so you kind of missed it for today but uh I think that'll do it, guys. So please, if you have any ideas of what you might want to see next week, we could do a tip. We can do a trick. We can do, maybe I'll customize something. I have a couple other planes. I have a Tiger Cat fresh in the box back there. I have an F-35 we could do. Um, but I really wanted to do the gyro live just so 
anybody who watches my videos and thinks they're, you know, they're so produced and it takes time, look how fast I did to set up a gyro to the basic point. Like, don't be afraid of them, man. They're going to help you in windy days and they're not hard to set up. You don't need to buy one pre-set up is what I'm saying. You can, you can get one and do it yourself for cheaper and have no problem. So guys, that's going to do it for episode number three. I want to thank everybody for joining. Uh, I already said the whole spiel. So I think Alex, are you ready to uh, bring us out? Say goodbye. Guys, like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Motion RC Live. That rhymes. <laughs>